Okay, so hello everyone. In the previous discussion videos we have, we were able to fully discuss the concept of your uh, laws of thermodynamics. And in this discussion video, we have to focus fully on the discussion of the first law of thermodynamics, wherein our focus was, is on the um, topics concerning heat, internal energy, and work. If we could recall, we have this specific formula na ang aton nga uh, amon yang aton nga general nga formula nga ginagamit if we would like to understand your first law of thermodynamics that is your net change in your total energy is equal to the heat added sa aton uh, minus the work done of a specific na system so if you would like to fully understand this law of thermodynamics very easily it states that your first law of thermodynamics is equal to the net change in the total energy of the system that is equal to the it gin add natin sa system minus ang work nga ginhimo or done by the system natin okay when the system gains heat therefore so dre kung magdugang dre ang values ang heat therefore the net sa ngaton nga total change will increase also. Pero kung magdugang yung ginaubra o ginaperform ng work, then the net change in total uh, energy is also decreasing. So, it's just a simple and pwede isigilsya natin malantaw through a, this specific na formula. But, um, there are certain nga mga topics nga kinanglan nato or kin, nga mga specific na parameters related to your first law of thermodynamics na kinangalan danay natin may sindihan if you would like to fully understand the concept of your laws of thermodynamics and this one includes your heat capacity and your specific heat so ano ang kinalain or ano ni sila ano na ang specific heat ano ang heat capacity okay so i have here a specific na picture so um <clears throat> Kung lantawo naton, kung makita ninyo, for example, naglakad kamo sa beach, and um, makita ninyo, the sun becomes very hot due to sun rays. Water remains colder even in the scorching summer noon. Nga ah, ano ang, ano ang concept behind sini? Ano ang concept or ano ang reason sini? Both the sands and water, kung tanawo naton, are receiving malang sang the same amount of sun rays. <coughs> Are used naman sila kakabaton ng amount of sun ray or same amount of heat energy. So then, ang question is, nga ah, may ara sang difference in the temperature of sand and water. Nga ah, why does this happen? Or ano ay han ang possible reason? So, yes, the correct, con the concept of your heat capacity plays an important role sa sininga situation. So, let me explain to you kung anong gakatabo dali on the concept of thermodynamics. So, <clears throat> as shown in this picture, the sun gets heated more as compared sa aton nga water nga ginaconsider. We can say that for heating a sand, only a few amount of heat ang kinanglan aton or ang, ang, ang required sa aton. So, um, while ang pag-init or ang heating of water ga require siya lot of heat para mas mapainit siya so in other words so sand is um is not having sang more nga capacity to absorb heat while water keeps on absorbing sang heat of the sun so amo na ang reason pero <clears throat> let me give you just a very funny pero uh, nga example or medyo uh, simply nga example um, kun makita ninyo a short uh, tempered nga mga tao gets angry very soon while a calm nga person who keep on tolerating everything will not become angry easily so ang ining uh, analogy this is something similar to your heat capacity. So, the amount of heat required for same change in temperature is different sa sari-sari nga taho. Do ka, kumbaga, sari-sari sila tolerance. Do ka muna, sari-sari sila capacity to handle, for example, stress, to handle any 
nga kakabato ni mo sa life. Hindi ka mo ya parius parius ang classmate mo. Hindi ka mo parius tolerance sa pain mo amo na. Do ka mo man sa Japan ang concept of heat capacity. So let me explain to you through this one. Okay, kung nakita ninyo, Dari, I have a specific na picture. Pasensya na sa picture. For example, we have uh, one kilogram of sand. And right now, uh, ang ato nga temperature nga kakaproduce, Dari, sa ato nga, nga ginagamit nga pang init is 20 degrees Celsius. So, now, I want to increase the temperature to 25 degrees Celsius. So, the amount of heat required to increase sang sininga temperature halin sa 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius, for example, is 1,000 joules. Okay. Ang kinanglanaw na ko, amount of heat para mapasaka ko ang originally nga 20 degrees Celsius to 25 degrees Celsius is 1,000 joules. Again, so, I have here lain naman nga nga experiment wherein I have subong water ang ato ni Gimbutang hindi isan. So, for example, uh, same man Japan nga amount of water which is 1 kilogram of water. So, in this same man Japan nga siludlan. So, at 20 degree Celsius. kag increase ko man siya into 25 degree Celsius using sang burner nga ginagamit naton. Pamangkot ko, uh, ano ay hanang matabok? Ang pamangkot is, will it consume more heat or less heat energy para mapabutang ta siya into 25 degrees Celsius? Okay, the answer is, water will consume mas damo ng heat energy compared to the same quantity of sand. This happened because water has more capacity para mag-absorb sa heat. So, ano, ano ba lang heat capacity? Ano ang concept of heat capacity? When we mention about heat capacity, that is the ratio of the heat supplied to the body to the change in its temperature. Delta T ang tawag naton because that is change in temperature and that is called your heat capacity of that body. The ratio of heat to the change in temperature. That's why we have sang sininga nga formula. So, heat and change in temperature. <clears throat> heat capacity is defined as your amount of heat absorbed in order to increase the temperature by one unit. So, ang pamangkot is, paano siya naton? Paano siya naton masapos ma madumduman? Paano siya naton masapos i-remember? ang ini nga mga formula or ang ini nga concept. Okay, so just see this formula. Kung nakita ninyo, HC is equal to Q the over delta T. Okay, take note that in this formula of heat capacity, your change in temperature is 1. So, kung ang imo be, for example, ang change in temperature is 1. So, that means, ang imo ng um, heat is equal to your heat capacity. Okay, so it means that heat absorbed or rejected is also known as heat capacity. So the unit of heat capacity, take note, is joules per Kelvin. So that is joules per Kelvin. Take note lang. So the um, based on this example of the sand and water, natun nga representation, we notice that the heat capacity of sand is less compared to the heat capacity of water. So, that means that heat capacity depends on the specific na material of a certain na body. Also, one thing I would like to add, heat capacity uh, also depends on the mass of the object. Again, heat capacity, hambal na kukagina, Based sa itong nagkita, dari, nagadepende siya sa kung ano nga object ang giniinit naton. Another one. Ang heat capacity dependent man siya kung ano kadamo ang um, mga giniinit. The mass of a certain body or certain object na gusto naton initon. The bigger the mass of the object, syempre, kung mas dako siya or mas, dag, mas 
uh, bugat siya, mas damo ang iyang content, kinanglan man naton sa mas damo nga heat, uh, <clears throat> more heat will be absorbed. So, its heat capacity will be more. So, kung damo siya, mas damo siya ma-absorb ng heat. <clears throat> so, ang mga smaller nga mass of object, syempre, dasig lang siya initon. So, but si Ningon Jutay na lang hit ang pwede niya ma-absorb. So, its heat capacity will be less. So, specific heat capacity um, or specific heat, uh, i-discuss naman na later on. So, ano na siya yung kinalain niya? With your heat capacity and uh, anong kinalain sa dua? Heat capacity and specific heat capacity. But, um, aton nga understanding about the mass. So, uh, let me explain through this simple example. Okay? Everything is same as heat capacity. We just have to take a unit mass over here. So, um, maghamba ka specific uh, heat capacity or specific heat. Ang basihan natin subong is ag tawag, include natin sa itong consideration ang mass. So, just see this uh, representation or ining a picture in order for us to fully understand the concept of specific heat capacity. So, you can see that we have here an iron block. So, having 1 kilogram ng uh, mass, kag mi ara kita, ginakonsider ng 21 degrees Celsius ng temperature. Okay, so now on applying some heat, its, tep it's temperature increases by 1 degree Celsius. So, and its temperature becomes 21 degree Celsius. Okay, so una-una, amo ni iya nga state, 1 kilogram, 20 degree Celsius. Sa ginita na, it becomes 1 kilogram, 21 degree Celsius. During this phenomenon, the amount of heat nga gin supply naton is known as your specific heat capacity of the body. So, ang ang amount of heat na ginagamit natin sa sining condition, ginatawag na siya natin yung specific heat capacity. Let me give you a clear definition. Ano ang specific heat capacity because of this very simple example. So, specific heat capacity is defined as the amount of heat absorbed in order to increase the temperature by one unit of a unit mass. So, that means, mag-increase ka by one unit. That is specific heat capacity. And take note, its representation is C. C is equals to Q all over M delta T. Or kung i-suliun ta ni, or kung i-manipulate ang equation, may matita ka mo ng equation for heat that is Q is equals to MC delta T. So, amun siya ang iyang ginhalinan sa sinaanga representation or sa sinaanga formula. C is equals to Q all over M delta T. Okay, so, uh, based on this uh, equation, it means that if the mass of the body is unity or 1, then the heat capacity of the body is also known as your specific heat capacity or your specific heat. Okay, kung wala man lang, kung 1 lang man eh, ang imong M or ang imong mass, so same lang ang imong heat capacity kag imong specific heat capacity. Okay, so kabay pa medyo klaro na ang concept of your heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Kung mag-change ka by one unit and a specific na unit of mass, that is your specific heat capacity. Amo lang mo nang kinalain nila nga liwa. So, now I have here a uh, concept on the types of thermodynamic processes. Medyo introduce na lang ni Derecho para mas ma plus star sa aton because still this focuses on heat ng mga topics. And we have apat ka thermodynamic processes. This includes your isobaric, your isochoric, adiabatic, and isothermal processes. So if we talk about isobaric ng process, so iso means the same. So that means the same ng bar or the same 
um, um, uh, based on this picture, so let me present. Okay, so many. We are boiling water in an open vessel. So probably kakakita tani yung gakarap gakakita nyo ni sa balay. Hindi man nga dapat kandila na di burner or bisan nyo lang da. Okay, so this is boiling of water in an open nga vessel. So the boiling of water takes place so by the atmospheric nga pressure only. So, kung ano ang aras sa atmosphere ng pressure, ang munang iya nga ginaconsider, the pressure neither increases nor decreases. So, maghambal ka nga isobaric, hamba ko kagina, iso is the same. So, thermodynamic process, nga ang imong pressure remains constant. Bar. Take note, bar is unit of pressure. Isobaric. That means constant, ang imong pressure. That is called your iso baric pressure. I have here another nga, nga condition or situation. We have boiling of water in a closed nga vessel. Closed vessel. So that means so kun isira naton ang aton nga vessel with the help of a lid and then i-boil naton ang tubig. Okay, so how uh, ano ang kinalain sini and the concept of thermodynamics. So, well, in this process, the vessel or the cooker is closed, which means the volume of the vessel remains the same only. The volume is neither increasing nor decreasing. I don't know kung paano ni siya kakatabo. But dapat ma-remain constant, dapat ang ating volume sa sulod. Hindi dapat mabuhinan. And uh, if that specific process so uh, happens, nga ang through the thermodynamic process, ang ating volume remains constant, then that is referred to as your isochoric process. Next one, we have here your next nga, uh, process. Okay, so we have your adiabatic or adiabatic nga process. So when we mention about adiabatic process, okay, so the thermodynamic process in which there is no heat transfer involved. So wala ka sang heat transfer nga na-involve. So, wala heat transfer nga nagkatabo. Okay, so let me give you a simple example. Um, this one, um, in a mechanical nga application, piston. So, piston and your cylinder. So, the piston, it moves eh, ng up and down. Kabalo kita nga amun ang iyang movement. This one. So, which means, may ara sa nagkatabo ng expansion and compression. So, but there is no heat exchange occurring between the system and the surrounding. So, thus, this is an example of your adiabatic process. So, kung nagasaka pa na it is compressing or may ara compression and expansion nga gakatabo. But, wala di sang heat nga nagatransfer halin sa atong surrounding pakadto sa atong system or halin sa system natong pakadto sa gwa. So, kung wala sang transfer of heat nga nagkatabo in a specific na thermodynamic process, then that is referred to as your adiabatic process. Or adiabatic process. Uh, we have also your isothermal process. Ano kinalain si ni with your adiabatic? So, the thermodynamic process which occurs at constant temperature. Take note, isothermal is that your um, temperature is constant. Adiabatic, wala heat transfer. Very constant ang temperature. So, for your isothermal process. So, isothermal. So, you have already observed a boiling water 
sa mga balay ninyo. So, but I'll tell you what exactly happens during this process. So, as shown in this picture, kung um, ma-imagine natin, so the water is boiling, but this process occurs at a constant ng temperature. So, makita na siya natin kung batanga natin sa thermometer reading. So, dere. And this one, um, the reading remain constant only. Kung ibutang ta ang thermometer. So, dere. Pag nag-init na siya, makonstant na na ang temperature sa sinangat, sa sinang, uh, specific nga condition. So, the thermodynamic process which occurs at constant pressure is known as your isothermal process. Okay, so let me proceed. Uh, let me proceed. I mean, to the concept of uh, since we discuss sa manato ang different ng thermodynamic process. Dorit siyon ko nila ang discussion in the reversible and non and irreversible ng mga process. Kaya ano ni siya? Based on this picture, automatic pwede na siya nato ma consider. Pwede na nato ma describe. So we have, for example, an ice cream. An ice cream pwede siya natin makonvert into liquid through heating. And again, pwede siya natin ibalik. Pwede siya natin ibalik into an ice cream by freezing. Same with your ice. So, pwede siya natin maka ang, ang ice pwede makonvert into water and water pwede mabalik into ice. So, that is your reversible nga process. When we talk about reversible process, syempre, Ang muna ang ating consideration, pwede natin ma-reverse back to its original state ang ating uh, ginhimo ng process. So, contrary to that, is your irreversible ng process. So, example si na is this one. So, uh, wood, gin-convert siya into fire. So, pero ang fire, hindi ito pwede mabalik into wood. So, that is irreversible process. Example si again is your, or another one is your egg. Kung ginluto ta na siya, ng fried egg na siya, hindi ta na siya pwede ibalik liwat into raw nga egg. So, that means, that is an irreversible process. Okay, another concept on the field of thermodynamics is heat engine. Medyo nalabyan, tanani, in the first nga discussion video about thermodynamics. But let me just explain. So, probably, damo na kamo may nakita ang engine or hindi ko din di man in reality sa mga videos nga kakakita niyo sa internet. So, ang question is, paano nagagana ang engine? Paano nagagana? Paano siya nag-work? Basi mahamba ka mo, yes, it works because of fuel. It works with the help of fuel. That is correct. The fuel burns inside the engine kag amuna ang nagapudus ang heat. Ang heat nga uh, napudus, amuna ang ginagamit to do some work or para mag-perform some work. Let me explain to you with this very simple nga diagram. So, nakita ta na nga diagram sa previous naton nga discussion. So, but this one, gamiton ta siya subong to understand the concept of your heat engine. Okay, kung makita ninyo sa sininga figure, may ara kita dua ka body. So, you have your hot body and you have your cold body. Now, in the uh, discussion on heat transfer, na-mention natin or na-discuss natin the transfer of heat always takes place. Halin sa aton nga hot body, pakadto sa aton nga cold body. So, here also, heat will flow. Halin sa aton nga hot body, pakadto sa aton nga cold body. So, wherein we have your... Q1, heat transferred from the hot body. Q2 is the heat received sa aton nga cold nga body. So, Q1, ang transfer natin nga heat halindari. Q2 is the heat nga, nga na receive sa aton nga cold body. Now, if we keep the engine between this hot body and cold body, then work can be produced from this engine 
So, as um, nag-flow uh, ang aton nga heat from hot body pa kadto sa cold body. Again, medyo klaruhon ta. Hambal na aton ga-transfer ang heat halin sa hot body pa kadto sa cold body. And you have ang ini, ang gina-transfer ng heat halin sa hot body is Q1. Ang Q2 is the uh, heat nga gaka-receive sa ating cold body. Kung may ari ko di heat engine, for example, sa tunga, because of the process nga nagkatabo sa pag-pass or pag-move, pag-transfer sa heat halin sa hot body, pa to the may work na ang matabo ang ini nga component or ang ating heat engine. And uh, that one is... Um, uh, gakatabo siya because of the process of pag-transfer sa heat. Now, I'll give you a short and simple definition of a heat engine. Kung maghamba ka heat engine, that is, so take note lang dana of the formula, W is equals to Q1 minus Q2. So, heat engine is the device which is used for producing motive power from the heat. So, a heat engine is a machine or a device that converts heat energy into mechanical energy by transfer of heat from high temperature to lower temperature. So, ang hambal darigani, that is the machine that converts some heat energy into mechanical energy. So, that means, by agakatabu na because of the na experience niya nga transfer of heat from high temperature to low temperature. So, do you know that in the picture we present natin, so how much work can be produced by the transfer of heat Q1 and Q2 sa ating picture? So, here, the total amount sa ating work done by the heat engine will be, ang muna siyang patandaan ko sa inyo, which is W is equals to your Q1 minus Q2. So, the unit of work na gakahimo sa ating system is the same as the unit of Joule. So, or, I mean the unit of heat which is Joule. So, uh, para use lang na sila unit. Take note, hindi malipat kada para me. The unit of work is also the same as the unit of heat which is Joule. Okay, so kung um, medyo naplastar na nato ng heat engine, again, gakatabo ang orga uh, ginakonsider nato ng heat engine. That is the device nga nga perform siya work because of the transfer of uh, temperature halin sa hot body pa kato sa cold body. So, another one that we have here, your heat pump. Ano naman niya kinalain sini? So, um, medyo paris-paris lang at ng representation. But, ano subong ang heat pump? Okay. So, if we recall, kung pwede natin i-recall ang heat engine kagina. So, the heat transfer takes place halin sa ito nga higher temperature body, pakato sa ito nga lower temperature body. So, and the device or the machine produces some useful work because of that uh, transfer. So, and that's obviously right. In fact, na siya based on the concept na discuss natin in the previous discussion yung mga videos. So, but what if we want to transfer the heat in reverse direction. Ano ang, ang matabo dere? That means, from lower temperature body to higher temperature body, ang gusto natin na transfer of heat. So, heat transfer, again, never takes place. So, liwat ha? Based on the previous natin ng mga discussion, heat transfer never takes place from lower temperature to higher temperature in its own. So, wala siya ga transfer heat from lower temperature to high temperature. Nga siya lang. Ma-flow lang siya. So, in this case, kinangla na ito sa bago nga device para mahimo na naton. And this device, ang muna siyang ginatawag na ito yung heat pump. So, as shown in this diagram, so, heat pump extracts sa aton nga... Um, Q1 amount of heat halin sa atong na lower temperature body kag i-deliver niya na sa atong nga and delivers a Q2 amount of heat pakadto sa atong nga higher temperature body. So, um, i-absorb niya. Again ha? So, para mas maintindihan. I-absorb sa atong nga heat pump or extract niya ang Q1. So, halin sa aton nga lower temperature body, kag-ipasa niya ang Q2. 
So, extract niya ang Q1, ipasa niya ang Q2. Yung amount of heat sa pakadto sa itong higher temperature body. So, question is, will this heat transfer takes place on its own? So, again, hambal na itong kagina, hindi pwede. We need to supply some work to this device in order nga makatransfer kita sang heat halin sa itong lower temperature to higher temperature. Let me give you a simple definition of a heat pump based on this diagram. So, heat pump is a device which is used to transfer heat halin sa itong lower temperature to higher temperature by using mechanical energy. Okay, so, um, question is, uh, how, since we mentioned mechanical energy, so para kung nung makatransfer kita sa heat halin sa lower temperature, paka do sa higher temperature, kinangla na ito magamit sa mechanical energy. So, ang question is, how much nga amount of mechanical energy ang kinangla na ito nga isupply sa ito nga heat pump para matabo ang transfer of heat halin sa lower body or lower temperature body paka do sa higher temperature nga body. So, ang amount of your um, mechanical energy nga required is equal to this one. This one. Work nga input dapat, which is equal to Q2 minus Q1. And the unit of work is still equal to, or still will be, joules. Okay? So, amo na siya. So, kung kagina, sa heat engine, so, ang transfer naton is matabo siya, or ang ang aton ginahimo nga heat transfer makaproduce sa work dari naman sa heat pump para makaproduce ka heat transfer dapat maubra ka dana yung work and that is through your mechanical energy okay so that's the difference of the two this is it for now thank you stay safe god bless